and welcome back to TBR Cluedo! This is my monthly TBR game themed off of Cluedo or Clue if you're a heathen <laughs> and are American where we've got different rooms that correspond to a genre and then a prompt and I have to read a book that fits that genre and that prompt basically is the situation and it's time for our last one of the year. I'm in denial. I'm in denial. I think this may be the quickest year of my life. I know they say that like time speeds up <laughs> when, you know, as you age, but like, I'm, what is it gonna feel like when I'm 80? Cause this ain't fun. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. I feel like it's always in T-Bell Kudo videos I say this as well. Cause then I, I'm like, oh my God. It like makes me confront where we are in the year and I'm like, shit. <laughs> But we're gonna be doing my TBR Cluedo for December. And if you know me, my December content, <laughs> there's a series coming back, which a lot of you will know about, that um, I obviously have no idea, if you know the series, I have no idea why I'm reading for that because it's, t it's out of my hands. <laughs> I am reading books for the Goodreads um, Mystery Thriller Awards, but I, <laughs> right now in filming, I don't know what like half of those books are gonna be. So it's a bit difficult. Or like I have an inkling, but I don't wanna like, you know, place my bets on it and then, cause I'll be wrong, I will be wrong. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna be trying to finish all of the books that have been on TBL Cluedo so far this year that I have not yet read. So one little concession that I'm making to as myself this month is that I am allowed to put a book on this list that has been on TBR Cluedo before. Usually I don't allow myself to have repeats. If it's ever been on TBR Cluedo, it can't appear again. But I'm allowing myself, if a prompt comes up, that it fits to put a book that's already been on TBR Cluedo in. That's the only difference this month. But before we get into the roles for this month, I wanna take a moment to say such a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Serious Readers. You guys know, if you're a regular viewer here, that I love my Serious Light so much. It has completely revolutionized my reading, especially now that it is so dark. It's literally so dark. I was on like a Zoom call with some of my patrons the other day and I was like, yeah, it's four o'clock and it's pitch black. And they're like, what? It's generally, it's so dark. <laughs> Also having been in Costa Rica where it was sunny and hot and I'm back in the UK and it's cold and dark and rainy. It's literally dark from like two o'clock basically. You have like three hours of sunlight in the UK at the moment. So my serious light has been really saving my life when it comes to my reading. It's making me want to read. It's making reading easier. It has this daylight wavelength technology that is gentle in the eyes. It replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. And so I find it's not like a blue light. It's not a harsh light. It's a very easy light. You know, if I'm using it to read at night before I go to bed, it doesn't then keep me up like if I was scrolling on my phone or whatever. It makes me want to read, right? Because it makes reading such a more pleasurable experience. I genuinely cannot read if, if it's slightly dark without it. I have the wireless one, I have the high definition light that is rechargeable. And so I can move it around the house. If I'm like reading at my desk on reading sprints, I often move it over there. Or if I'm downstairs, sometimes I even take it downstairs with me to read. It has genuinely revolutionized my reading. It makes reading so easy. It makes everything on the page so legible. So I have a very exciting code for you guys, which is SR438, and this gets you a hundred pounds off a high definition light plus free international delivery. Also, they are made in the UK, but if you need like a US plug or a European plug, they can make that for you with these lights, which is amazing. So I cannot recommend enough. I think coming up to Christmas, it's a perfect Christmas gift for another reader in your life or for yourself. It's the perfect thing to ask for for Christmas and make sure you use my code to get a hundred pounds off a hundred pounds. It's such a good deal, guys. I cannot recommend it enough. I use it every day. I love it the most. <laughs> yeah, so I cannot recommend it enough. Guys, go check it out down below. Okay, shall we get into roll one? Okay, we definitely wanna try and get a lot of mysteries this round, but let's just see what happens, shall we? So, roll number one, person number two, which is purple over there in romance. Let's see how many we roll. Got a three and a four. Okay, I'm gonna go one, Two, no, I can't do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And get number 13, that is a TBR veteran. Role number one was a romance that is a TBR veteran. And for this one, I have gone with a book that has been on TBR Cluedo earlier this year. This was quite a long time ago this year. And that is Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This, I don't wanna know how long I've owned this book, but it's a long time. I think I got it right after it came out. And when did it come out? 2020? Gosh. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut down and I don't wanna talk about it. 
So yeah, this is one that I've really wanted to pick up. I think it's about a plus size girl who like does cosplay and the guy is on the TV show that she does cosplay for and they meet and they go on a date and it's like, oh my God, they love each other. I've heard such good things about this one and I've wanted to read it for such a long time. I'm always trying to find more romance authors that I enjoy because I find, I, I don't read a ton of romance, but with more than any other genre, I go back to the same authors again and again. Once I know I love a romance author, like Ali Hazelwood, like Abby Jimenez, like Talia Hibbert. They're kind of like all the romance that I read. So I think Olivia Dade and Emily Henry are like probably the two romance authors I'm most drawn to for like giving a go and adding them to my little circle of authors I read from for romance because I just find romance isn't my thing, but when I find a romance author that it, that really works for me, they really work for me. But there's all romance authors that don't really work for me. So I, I keep this little tight knit group and I feel like Olivia Dade could, add to it for me. I've heard so many good things about this. So excited to get to this later this, at the end of this year. Oh my God, what the hell? It's the end of the year, what the hell? I actually refuse. No, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> okay, roll number two. Person number one, which is green over here in fantasy. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a three and a four. Let's go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven again. We we'll get number nineteen. What is that? That is a book I have hauled recently. Next was a fantasy that I have hauled recently, and I gave this one to my patrons to vote on. They vote on one round of tea balcony every month, and that ends up being our book club pick for the month. And I thought fantasy would be a fun one to end the year on, something whimsical, or something a bit I find wintry about <laughs> fantasy. So the options I gave them were A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley, Throwback by Maureen Goo, God Killer by Hannah Kinnear and Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie M. Holmberg. I thought Keeper of Enchanted Rooms was gonna win because it's like a cozy fantasy, but the winner ended up being God Killer. So this is what we're gonna be reading together for December on the book club. I have had quite good things. Also, I love, I got like a, like a personalized bookmark. How cute is that? It's about a girl who I think is meant to kill gods. Right. And then she finds a god that she cannot kill. It is a start in a series. In fact, three of them were starts of a series. And I let everyone know. I, I gave a sneaky hint. And I said, just let you know, the only one that's not a start of a series on here is throwback. Look at the poll. Look at the poll. They want me to fail. They want me to fail. <laughs> How many people? Five people voted for throwback. Excuse me? Excuse me? But anyways, yeah, I'm very excited to read this. I love the cover. It's also not too long and I do like a fantasy. It's under 300 pages, I think. Yeah, I do like a fantasy that knows how to like constrain itself. I think so many, so much fantasy is just too long. <laughs> fantasy can get a bit up its own ass and just think, oh my God, the world revolves around me and everyone needs to know, you know, my amazing writing. Not necessarily. You could, you could cut it down a bit. So I'm excited to read a short fantasy, even though it is part of a series. I'm not sure if it's only a duology or if it's gonna be longer, but also I won't be starting this actually to the new year. Cause even though it's our December book club pick, the live show will be on the weekend of 6th or 7th of January. And I always try to read it close to the live show. So I actually won't be starting another series at the end of this year, guys, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Roll number three. I'm getting a bit worried at the lack of mystery. Person number three, which is red. Okay, if we roll a lot, we might get into mystery. Holy shit. Okay, we've got a four and a five. Can we make anywhere in that? Can we please get back into line? Okay, where can we get to with that? That's nine. That's not bad. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Okay, that is number 23. Hang on, my document isn't scrolled down that far. Oh, that is a book under 300 pages. Okay. Next was a mystery under 300 pages and I have chosen The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. This is a little novella. Let's see how long it actually is. And I think a good chunk of this is The Kind Worth Killing. Yeah, because they've got like the first chapter of The Kind Worth Killing. It is 124 pages. I'm going to be doing a video right before Christmas where I read some Christmassy mysteries and this is one of them. I'm very excited. I love reading. I do like, I don't read it the whole December. I like a little concerted push <laughs> at the end of right before Christmas of reading Christmas mysteries or Christmas romances. I often 
often like I've read sometimes some Christmas mysteries like on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day before um, and I just really enjoy it and we've had a bit of an influx of like Christmassy mysteries there may be another one on this TBR that you'll see this year so I'm really excited about that so this one we've got Ashley she's invited to spend Christmas with her classmates family at their Cotswolds Manor house she's interested in her friend's twin brother okay but then something strange about the old house what could the motives of the mysterious Chapman family be and what holiday horrors might be lying away so we're looking we're gonna get a bit of Christmas murder you know, there's something fucked up about this family. <laughs> I'm excited. I've enjoyed some Peter Swanson that I've read it. I, well, how much Peter Swanson I've read? I enjoyed The Kind Worth Killing. That was like a 4.5 for me. And I know he's a bit hit or miss, but I just love, I love a Christmas murder mystery. I love it. I, what do you expect? I love it. It's Pretty legendary if you ask me. I love it. It's just so camp and ridiculous and fun. And it's only 124 pages. So in my mind, I want it to kind of like, go insane. I want it to go there, you know? I want it to go high stakes straight away. But we'll see whether it does or not. Okay, roll number four. Person number eight, which is blue over in contemporary. Or can we get the, the wand? That would be really helpful. Oh shit. <laughs> We've got a five and a six, right. How can we get the wand? Because obviously it's only two spots away from us. So what kind of go around can we do? Let's see. <laughs> right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I got it. <laughs> and that is the wand, which means a book I need for a reading vlog. Okay, next was the wand, which is any book that I need to read for a reading vlog. And listen, this one was actually harder than I thought. When I got the wand, I was like, yes! <laughs> but it was almost like, it, it made me panic because for a lot of my vlogs, I don't know what's gonna be in them. <laughs> so this book is a book I think is gonna make the top 10 for Goodreads mystery thriller. If it doesn't, this never happened. This book was never on this TBR. There was never a book here, in fact. Let's just uh, forget about that, shall we? <laughs> Could you just cut that out? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure this is gonna make the top 10 and it is What Lies in the Words by Kate Alice Marshall. I would be surprised if this doesn't make top 10. Just having to commit to that and say that and put it on the TBR fills me with such dread because I feel like there's only three that I know for sure are gonna make top 10 and it's none of this is true. Uh, Last Devil to Die, which were on last month's TBR because I probably will read them in November and uh, another book, which I'm not going to say because it might be coming up later on. <laughs> but yeah, this is Kate Alice Marshall and I've read Kate Alice Marshall's YA. I've never read Kate Alice Marshall's adult. I'm not sure if this is her adult debut actually, but we've got these friends who sent a killer to prison when they were 11, but they were actually liars. And I think one of them wants to tell the truth and she goes missing and then we're seeing what happened. I've liked Kate Alice Marshall's stuff. For me, her uh, YA stuff often sounds more exciting to me than this does. This sounds a bit like generic thriller. Don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, that's what it sounds like. Whereas I feel like her YA synopses are always so unique and different. So I'm intrigued to see what this ends up being like. I'm not going in with like the highest of expectations, but I am I am excited to give it a go because I have enjoyed K. Alice Marshall stuff in the past. What have I read by K. Alice Marshall? Let me not talk out of my ass. Oh, I read Rules for Vanishing, which I enjoyed. I think I gave that a four stars or like a 3.5. Yeah, I gave it a 3.5, but I really like the sound of these fleeting shadows. I really like the sound of, is it the narrow? So I really like the sound of a lot of her books. Oh my God, interesting. This is already by far her most popular book. This has 82,000 ratings. The next most popular is Rules of Vanishing with 9,000 ratings. Granted YA, like there'll be kids who read those books and don't use Goodreads, but that is crazy how popular this has been. Okay, I'm, be I'm feeling better about this. This will make top 10. <laughs> Two more rolls, roll number five, person number six, which is yellow over in the thriller. Let's see how many we roll. We've got four and a two. One, two, three, four. That is number five, which is something with blue on the cover. Roll number five was a thriller with blue on the cover and I am adding in the only one left by Riley Sager. That's blue, it's blue. <laughs> Whenever it's the color ones, I feel the need to defend myself. I'm like, it's blue. <laughs> This one's tricky, right? Because I think in my TBR video that I just did, where I went through every book on my TBR, I think I put this under mystery. Can the, the sorry, my camera's tracking the book, not me, how rude. I think I put this under mystery, but then when I was looking for a book that fit this prompt, this is shelved primarily as thriller on Goodreads. So I feel like it's half and half, but you know, it's fine. It counts, it counts. Sure, Jan. 
I am so excited to read this. This is one of the books I'm most excited to read for the Goodreads video. We're following Lenora Hope, whose whole family was massacred. Everyone believes she did it. She lives in this home on the cliff alone, and we're following a character who goes to look after her, and Lenora starts typing her story. There's something about Riley, right? We have a difficult relationship. I think I've only ever given him one five star, but I keep coming back, right? Riley Sager is always gonna be a good time. You may not like the book. The book might be shit, but you're gonna have a good time. And I just keep coming back. I will keep coming back. Riley Sager is one of the only authors that I have read every single book from. I've read all his books. I don't know why. I just, I just keep reading them. <laughs> But I think this has been one of his most well received for a long time. I really, really liked House Across the Lake. I think I even gave that like a, it was either a four or a 4.5 I gave House Across the Lake. I don't think I gave it a five. House Across the Lake wasn't super well received, but I did really enjoy it. Survive the Night, we all hated. <laughs> but um, I, I this one has been so well received that I'm very hopeful for it, that we all enjoy it. I'm very, I'm very, very excited to read this one. Okay, final roll. Person number three, which is red over here. Good, okay, we can get another mystery in. <laughs> Let's see how many we roll. A five or a one? What can I get to in that? Maybe this one over here. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. That is number eight, which is, oh, a 2023 release. Okay, that's a good one. And then our final role was a mystery that is a 2023 release and I am going for The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. Another short little Christmassy murder mystery. This is like a sequel to The Appeal by Janice Hallett, which was her first book, her debut. And it's all told in emails and text messages. It's mixed media like Janice Hallett does. And um, they're putting on like a Christmas show <laughs> in the town and then someone dies. <laughs> I'm just excited. I didn't love The Appeal as much as I've loved her other stuff. For me, The Twyford Code was a 4.5 and the mysterious case the Appleton Angels was a five but I could see the potential with the appeal and so I'm hoping going back to this format with a Christmas element with improved writing as she's kind of grown as an author will be a success so I'm really really excited to read this I think it's gonna be so fun and like I said I love Christmas murder mysteries I love them that's what Christmas is about isn't it yeah so that is our December TBR let me know what you thought of any of these books if you read them I would love to know all of your thoughts guys let me know which of these are most excited to see me read as well and I am just so excited for all the reading and all the videos I've got coming in December. It's some of my favorite time to make content. I love end of year content. I love making it. I love watching everyone's end of year content. We're gonna be fed this, this next month. <laughs> We are going to be fed well by booktube. So yeah, I am so excited for the month ahead. I love you guys. If you got to the end of the video, put a Christmassy emoji down below because I'm already in the mood. So put a Christmassy emoji if you got to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!